This video could have been in chapter one of the Nature of Code playlist because it is about a specific piece of vector mathematics, the dot product, and a concept known as scalar projection. However, it is here in this section of the Nature of Code because I eventually want to make this example. This is crowd path following a demonstration of one of the combined behaviors in Craig Reynolds' Steering Behaviors for Autonomous Characters paper from 1999. And in order to make this example, I first just need to work out path following itself with one little dot following the path. And in order to figure out path following, I need to understand the concept of scalar projection. Scalar projection is actually a foundational concept for three of these behaviors containment, wall following, and path following. And I hope I can eventually make a video on each of those. They're all super interesting on their own, but I'm gonna focus just on the concept of scalar projection and lead it into path following. So what is scalar projection in the first place? Scalar projection is a concept that applies when you have two vectors. Here I have vectors A and B. Projections are things I've covered before, and in fact, I did a whole video on how to render 3D geometry in a 2D canvas with the concept of projection. And here we've actually got a simpler scenario. Let's say there's a light source up here. You could imagine a shadow being cast of the vector A onto the vector B. This blue vector is then the vector projection of A onto B. Its magnitude, or its length, is the scalar projection. I may not have drawn this perfectly, by the way, but this is a right angle here. This vector here, pointing up, is known as the normal. It's the normal to this vector b. It's perpendicular at this point. So I'll get to why I want this value in a moment, but let's just say right now I want to know the scalar projection. What is the length of this vector? How do I calculate that? Let's say I make this the angle theta. Well, if you recall from chapter three and trigonometry, I could say that cosine of theta equals adjacent, oh look, the scalar projection. I'll call that SP, divided by the magnitude or length of vector A. I don't recall whether I specifically mentioned this, but you can refer to a vector's magnitude with these two uh, pipe or line, uh, what do you call these? <laughs> these little symbols next to, <laughs> next to the A. Another way of writing this is scalar projection equals the magnitude of vector A times cosine of that angle. Do you remember? It was just about 45 minutes ago, but hopefully just a few minutes for you, because I've been trying to figure this out for a while. I mentioned the dot product. Why did I mention the dot product? Again, what am I trying to solve for? The scalar projection. I know the magnitude of vector A. I made that vector up. I know the, ooh, I don't know that angle. I'd have to figure out that angle. How do I figure out the angle between vector A and vector B? Aha! The dot product is a mathematical operation between two vectors, typically referenced with a dot. And it's the key to unlocking the angle between two vectors. Now, I could possibly go and make a whole video just about how to calculate the angle between two vectors, and P5 actually has an angle between function, which will just give you the angle between two vectors using the dot product. But for our purposes here, I think the thing that's most useful is for me to define how it is you calculate the dot product. The dot product of A dot B equals the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B times cosine of the angle between the vectors. I just want to note that this looks really, really similar to this right here. The only thing that's different is that the magnitude of B is missing from here. Well, if I just made B a unit vector, then its length would be one. So this is the dot product between A and B if B is a unit vector. The scalar projection equals A dot B if B is a unit vector. Well, any vector I could just call normalize on. But aren't I just going in circles here? 
Because now if I calculate this dot product between A and B, I mean, I've got the magnitude of both vectors, but I don't have that angle. Well, guess what? <laughs> There's an entire other formula to calculate the dot product of two vectors that doesn't involve the angle. It's in equivalent, you will get the same result as this, but you don't need the angle, therefore you can solve for the angle. Let me divide A and B into its components. I can represent the vector A as A sub X, A sub Y. I can represent the vector B as B sub X, B sub Y. The dot product of A dot B also equals the X component of A times the X component of B plus the Y component of A times the Y component of B. And if I've started with these two vectors, I could just normalize B and then compute the dot product this way and I have the scalar projection. If you want a little exercise to yourself, you could also now work out the math for how you would calculate the angle between two vectors by knowing that these two equations are equal to each other. Again, you don't need to because there's the P5 angle between function that does that math, but you could. Let's see what this looks like in code. So I'm going to start with something that closely mirrors what I've drawn over here. I have two vectors, A and B, and I've picked somewhat arbitrary numbers for them, but I'm trying to match the visual to what I have on the board. I'm drawing each vector as a line that emanates from an arbitrary position, 100 comma 200 in the canvas. Now what I'd like to do is draw this blue vector. So first let me try calculating the scalar projection. So I've written a function, the scalar projection of two vectors A and B, which equals the vector A dot the vector B if B is a unit vector. So I can say B dot normalize, return A dot B. Let's just take a look at this for a moment. It's A dot dot B. We actually have a function named dot. We get to write the dot and have the word dot. It's so much dot. Now let me call that function with A and B. Now I have to be careful here because this function is altering the vector B. It's normalizing it. So is it better for me to make a copy of it in the function or to call it with making a copy here? I think I'll make a copy in the function because that way whoever is calling the function doesn't have to worry. The function will protect you from yourself. So I'll write it out as one line, copy the vector, normalize it, and then return A dot the copy of B. So that's the scalar projection. But I kind of want to see, just visually, this vector projection. So what do I need to do? I could just take, oh, that vector b, <laughs> make a copy of it, and then set its magnitude to the scalar projection. Maybe I should make that function be the vector projection. In other words, take the vector b, make a copy of it, normalize it, calculate a dot b to get this scalar projection length and then take that normalized b and set its length to that. Now I've got this blue vector. Let's see if we got it right. Calculate the vector projection of a and b and then draw that as a line emanating from that same position. Oh, let me make it blue. Drum roll please. <laughs> Ah, I see the blue line there, but I've got an error. Oh, whoops, I forgot that I left this function call down here. I kind of want to double the thickness of everything to make it a little easier for you to see. Let me also add a little point here at the end, which I think would be useful to see. I'll show you why in a minute. There we go. <laughs> tweaked it a little bit and drawn all the elements I want to draw. If I have this vector A and vector B, I can now find all of the points that make up this full triangle here. This point that I'm calling pause, the end point of this vector, and now this point here, which is the end point of the vector projection. Why do I care so much about this? I'm so afraid to erase this because it's all this stuff that I've worked out but I need to draw from a blank slate. In the next video, I want to look at path following. 
Let's say this line is my path. Of course, I could eventually have a curved path or a bunch of line segments, just, but just for simplicity, let's think of the path as a line. Then I've got a vehicle. Maybe that vehicle is over here, and it's traveling with this velocity. Well, the path following steering behavior is a multi-step process. Step number one is predict a future location of the vehicle. I could say that it's over here. After a certain amount of time moving at this velocity, the vehicle will be over here. Then, look at the distance between this vehicle and the path. How do I define the distance between this point and a line? Right? Have you ever spent the time searching online for what is the distance between a point and a line? I've done this so many times. Fortunately, I think I finally have it for the most part. And the key is everything we just worked out with scalar projection. Let me show you why. Well, I could consider this path to be a vector. Call it B. I can, could consider making a vector that points from the beginning to this path to this point. Call that A. Well, the definition of the distance between a point and a line is find the normal vector at that line that intersects the point, right? The normal being this perpendicular vector. And at the end of that normal vector is this point, which lies at the scalar projection of A onto B. So anytime I want to find the distance between a point and a path or a wall or, or, or an obstacle in some sense, depending on what the obstacle is, I could look at the scalar projection to find the distance, the, the, the normal from that surface to a particular point. So coming back to here, let's say I'm not starting with vector A. Instead, I'm starting with this point. And let me make that point where the mouse is. Vector A is therefore the mouse point minus that position. I'm going to call B path, and then I'm going to calculate the vector A right here in draw. Now, I don't know if I need to do anything more. Let's see if this all just still works. Cannot read property X of undefined. Oh, I forgot I used B everywhere. Let me change that to path. Oh, and this has to be dot, I, don't, I always forget to write the subtract for some reason. Look at this, as I move the mouse around, I'm always finding the corresponding point in the line. Even if I go back here, I'm extending the line past, oh my goodness. So it's the, the idea of the line segment is, is irrelevant. It will always find the scalar projection to that vector. I want to just comment out some of the things that I'm drawing to just get back to the sort of scenario that we're going to see in the next video for a moment. So now we can see without drawing all that extra debugging information, I'm just finding that projection point onto a line from another point in the two-dimensional space. Okay, I hope you found this useful and helped you understand the concepts of both scalar projection and the dot product. There's obviously missing details there and I will add a bunch of links to the video's description that go through both of these mathematical concepts. But the code that I've written here is everything that we need to implement containment, wall following, and path following. So I'm going to go ahead and in the next video work on path following.